Namaste programs and welcome back to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is Bush Trip Alaska Leg 5. A fairly long one today from Cold Lake to I believe it's Nelson Lagoon Airport. Otherwise known as PACD to PAOU. Let's get going. We're full fuel. We re refueled just before the thing registered last time. We should be good to go. We want zero nine degrees. The purple line isn't showing. There we go. Two minutes and five seconds. All right. Kinzarov Lagoon. After departing Cold Bay Airport, head northeast towards the opening of Kinzarov Lagoon on the northern side of the bay. Meanwhile, as always, the controls are completely messed up. I wish I could figure out why that is. I hope they fix that in a bug in a bug fix soon, because it must be a bug. Anyway, found a trick to get back very quickly. Just put it on default and then save. Go back to your save controller thing. Back and forth, and then we're good to go for a little while. For now, for the moment. Where's this lagoon? There it is, right there. Let's get our trim going and us power down a bit. Level off while we look at this mountain behind us in awe. Incredible. We'll soon to be arriving at the lagoon. There we go. Uh, 91 degrees. 2 minutes 45. Okay, from 9 degrees to 91 degrees. Okay, cool. I thought maybe I looked at the wrong thing, but no, we're good. I think we're fine. Okay, uh, okay, I'm gonna mess this one up. Utagu Matsu Lower Pond. Turn and head east, making your way towards the spit of land that forms the opposite shore of Kinzarov Lagoon. Track with the shoreline as it bends south, watching for an inland pool of water called Utu Utagumatsu Lower Pond. U-T-A-G-U-M-A-T-X-U-U. Not sure how T-X-U-U should be pronounced. Probably something I can't do, because I don't didn't grow up speaking that language. in my ignorance I assume is some form of Eskimo or some such. Uta Guma Tsu Gigantic plain with its little pools of water. Gigantic mountain in the background. So, which one do you think would be the lower pond? Utugumatsu lower pond.
Hmm, is that a road there or some kind of weird river? I think it's a road. Does it lead to the lower pond? Oh right, there's a building on the, that's like a, I don't know, a sewerage plant or something. That's why there's a road. The algorithm hasn't realized it's a building. When I recognize these water side things, they're usually some kind of processing plant of some sort. Here we go. 133 for 4 minutes 49. Reset our clock. We go to Delta Creek. As you pass Utagumakzu Lower Pond, the shoreline will bend farther south. Continue on the coastal path gone too far. Coastal path even as it bends southeast and leads you into Leonard Harbour, eventually delivering you to the wide beds of Delta Creek. Okay. Let's follow the road and the coast. 4 minutes 49 it will almost certainly take us to these mountains, so let's actually power back up, trim back to zero and climb for a bit. I should probably just go around, because that would be essentially what they want us to do. But I'm going to go over. Because I am a thrall to the purple line. It is my lord and saviour and master. Whatever it says, I do. If you will. Gonna need to be higher than this. The more incredible scenery. I love this, um, I mean, you'd almost call it a butte over here, just sort of hanging there. All these pointy mountains, he's like, no, I'm going to be rough and flat. I'm going to do my own thing. Good on you. You look like a, uh, well, you kind of look like a, a train. But also some kind of lug-like lizard creature. I'm not judging you, by the way, just... You know, I've got nothing against slug-like lizard creatures. Some of my best friends look like slug-like lizard creatures. Wow. Wow. So this must be Leonard Harbour over to our right, and then I guess over the next ridge will be uh, the Delta Creek. Are we high enough now? I think we are. Oh, let's level up. Over the hills and far away. Where we were. It's nothing if not relaxing. Let's see, we've done 3 minutes and 38 seconds of 4 minutes 49, so this uh, Delta Creek must be just over here at the end of the uh, harbour. The wide beds of Delta Creek. They're like a wide bed. Although, I mean, actually, 
give me a, a large bed to sleep in and I'll sleep on one side and not move around very much. Don't know why, that's just how I am. My iPad and my CPAP machine and everything, it sits on the other side of the bed, so I need a wide bed. All right, nearly there. Purple Lion's almost certainly going to uh, lead us to the next, look at this, riverbed system. It's amazing. Part of it's a road, actually. That leads, that leads only, as far as I can see, to that, oh, there's a little bit of a town there as well. So there's some industry on the lake here. Interesting, interesting. We should be turning, as I say we should be turning, we turn. Okay, let's go, 73 degrees for two minutes and four seconds. Belkovsky Bay. Follow Delta Creek as it runs east across the land towards the edge of Belkovsky Bay ahead. Oh, there's an airport there, which we're not going to. On our way to Belkovsky Bay. You can have that one for free, uh, Belkovsky Bay. Tourism, um, division, department, office of tourism, whatever you call yourself. If there even is such a thing, I mean, there's an airport. I guess they fly in here and then they need that for the industry that's over there on the thing and whatever that might have been a water processing plant or sewage processing plant or just a place where they dump shit into the water. The sheer piss off value of it. Who knows, not me. I thought there might be a road along there, but that's just a beach. So, alright, Belkovsky Bay. Oh, isn't it lovely? Alright, we're a bit early, so we're back. Purple line knows all. 42 degrees for 2 minutes 56. And we're going to Captain Harbour, superhero of ports. At the coast of Belkovsky Bay, adjust and head northeast. Quickly, you should notice a break in the shoreline to the north where the bay waters run inland at Captain Harbour. Hey, Captain Harbour. Is that it there, is what they're saying? Break in the shoreline to the north, yeah. Where the bay waters run inland at Captain Harbour. Still going too fast. Well, it's go down to 75 power. Deal with 2700. 70 then. We must have a tailwind. Or would that be a hmm, headwind? I'd have to think about that and I don't think I'd be able to think about it clearly enough because I don't care enough. Arriving calmly and peacefully to Captain Harbour. Another minute or so before we need to turn.
and I don't know why when I try to speak a little bit more softly, I put on an accent. That's very strange. Where are we heading now? We're heading almost straight next, so uh, we don't need to gain some height. I was a bit concerned if we're turning right from this harbour. We're going to crash into that mountain, but uh, we should be good. We should be okay at the height we're at. As we arrive at the harbour, another 20 seconds by my clock, but um, again, I think we're going pretty fast. But we're probably gonna be early. Yep, there we go. So 39 degrees. Not much of a turn for 2 minutes 42. Where we're heading to Bushkin Lagoon. Fly past Captain Harbour and over the small stretch of land leading to the shore of Volcano Bay ahead. Begin gaining altitude as you go before crossing the bay towards Dushkin Lagoon in the distance. Well, it's Bushkin in the title and Dushkin in the text. So take your pick. Maybe you want it to be a B, maybe you want it to be a D. That's entirely up to you. I don't know what the real one is, so... I guess I could look it up, but I'm not going to. My apologies for any residents or lovers of Dushkin slash Bushkin Lagoon. I don't know which is correct. I think we're already high enough. Even though it says it's a gain height. We will, uh, well, we will climb that bridge when we come to it, if we need to. Hmm, another minute or so. so the, again, it's this lagoon in front of us. I always thought lagoon didn't have an opening into the, the sea, but I guess they do. All these lagoons do. I guess otherwise they'd just be an inland lake, I suppose. Rip Lake Goons. Maybe we might need to gain some height. We're turning quite 90, almost 90 degrees left next. Let's see, what's over here? Yeah, there's some mountains. I might start gaining some height. Just in case. What could it hurt? Almost certainly going to turn soon as we arrive at Lagoon, Bushkin slash Dushkin. There we go. Let's go 313 for 256, shall we? To Emmons Lake, adjust northwest and you should see a mountain just north of the lagoon. Behind the mountain, follow the slope towards icy Emmons Lake, nestled amidst snow-covered rock. We shall see about that. Very definitely want to gain some height. Which we are slowly but surely doing. I don't see no lake. There must be a hidden lake behind here somewhere. We 
Where are you, sneaky little lake? Hmm? Where are you hiding? Find you. Maybe I won't. There are two options there, two possibilities. Bridge there. Maybe, maybe. Let's say behind the mountain. Follow the slope towards Emmons Lake. Maybe that's a lake here. No. No. Emmons Lake found it. You can't hide from me. I find you if you are there. seen bigger lakes, to be honest, that's kind of a puddle. Alright, we've got 20 seconds by my clock, although because we're climbing we are a little bit slow through the air. It might be a bit later than that. Now yeah, this is a lake, okay, there's more lake around to the left there. Oh, look at that! Look at the hidden lake, wow! Always another surprise around the corner. Love it. Love it. Sometimes these bush trips are really cleverly done. to turn when we're sort of level with this because we're heading this way next to go to that shore. There we go, we're returning a bit earlier than I would have, but anyway. 280 for 140. Emmons Lake Northern Shoreline. Make your way across Emmons Lake to reach its northern shore. Simple and to the point. It wasn't quite the angle that I thought it was going to be. Good enough, good enough, north and shore, that's where we're headed. We're gonna gain some more height because there's lots of mountains around here. Boom, we're gonna be flying through the valley is essentially, but the uh, the waypoints don't really allow for that. They go over, they just you know obviously a straight line between like here and there where the next one is where you could fly along here and that would be fine but it would take you straight line over the mountain so we'll see we'll see what we have to do maybe we'll uh, follow the valleys maybe we'll be high enough just to hop over we'll see this icy lake with its icy lake beds pretty spectacular pretty darn spectacular seconds or so before we're turning. Where are we turning? We're turning right-ish. Look at this landscape here. Amazing. Really spectacular. And I know I keep saying that, but hey, it keeps being true. All right, we're turning. 3.43 for one minute, nine seconds. Agrilene Pinnacles. Beyond the shore of Emma's Lake, head north past the Agrilene Pinnacles. I have no idea how you say that. That rise and build towards the northwest. Well, yes, we're going to just avoid the pinnacles. Not really. Good thing we're still climbing. It wasn't really much of a valley to turn into, to be honest. So we're going to have to have gone across here anyway. Fortunately, we're already high enough. Probably give it a couple more uh, hundred feet, then we can level off because this is pretty much the highest peak around here. 
Well, unless, the, unless we're going that way next, but we'll find out. We shall find out. In fact, I'm going to level off. Here we go, next turn. We're doing 360 degrees, otherwise known as 000. zero, zero. Two minutes four. Cathedral River. Continue flying north towards the peaks. Watch for a slope coming up on the western side. Then follow it down and across Cathedral Valley. As you make your way, look for another riverbed below and let it lead you on. Oh, I'll let you lead me on, Cathedral River. Take me to the promised land. Down a bit. Probably actually want to lose height. I don't know how far away. We're probably still well. We're only another 20 minutes or so, so it's still possible we'll be flying into the mountains, but I suspect we're probably flying over here somewhere. Next turn is actually to the left, so yeah, we're heading away from the mountains. This must be Cathedral River below us now, this one here. This must be Cathedral Valley. Named after, of course, the famous Mrs. Cathedral. Probably going to turn about here because that's when we're hitting the uh, bend, and then we're going to head along the river this way. In a few seconds according to my calculations. There we go. Now we're doing 3.15 for 6 minutes and 30 seconds. We're heading to the shoreline. Back the Cathedral River as it twists a path north, bringing you back to the shores of Bristol Bay on the Bering Sea. Roger, roger. Well, 6 minutes. A bit of a stretch, but let me tell you, the next ones are twice as long as that. So, it's uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the scenery time. And there is a lot to enjoy. Look at this. What do you call this? Like a, a beauty almost. Bloody flat top of a mountain. Incredible. Awesome. Two minutes done of six minutes thirty, so almost a third of the way there. Obviously you can see the shoreline, so these uh, mysterious green lakes over on the left, which I assume is just really a artifact of the photography process, probably. Maybe it was that green, or maybe it just was 
bring it to sunny day or something or I don't know I didn't uh, think a, a lake that green has been overrun with um, algae or something which is possible obviously but generally due to uh, the unbalancing of things caused by some kind of industrial runoff so not much of that around here Maybe it is just a, a mossy pond. Plus lake. Maybe someone just painted the ground green. I don't know. No one knows. Except for the people who do know, but no one here knows. No one in this plane knows. Certainly not me. Certainly not... Well, maybe you. I don't know. You might know. Do you know? Let me know in the comments. Why is that... Why are these things green? I mean, to be fair, it does certainly look like just a mossy pond, lake kind of thing. The whole thing like that? That's crazy. It's crazy. What about the fishies who want to live in there? They can't. They can, they've got no sunlight. Presumably the plant life eats all the oxygen in the water. Why has increasing power decreased the, the revs? Now that makes no sense to me. Alright, 4 minutes 30 of 6 minutes 30. Nearly there, nearly there. Nearly at the end of this segment. And we have a 12 minute 28 segment. So we're not nearly there, but we're nearly... No. There different values of there. A weird one too, I mean it's like, like bits carved out of it and stuff. Someone skimming the surface on a boat or something when it was taken or? Is it frozen and green? I just don't know. It confuses poor me. And we're finally crossing back over Cathedral River. And there is its opening to the sea. Good job, Cathedral River. Good job. Where'd you come from? Where did you go? All the way up there from those mountains. The source will be up in there somewhere. All along these flat plains. All the way down to the ocean. Or the sea. The sea. When grown up in Sydney, I say the ocean, because of course, we live next to the ocean. But, uh, these days I live next to a sea, and I often call it the ocean, and I'm wrong. Wrong, damn wrong. It's a sea, it's the Mediterranean Sea, this is the Bering Sea. Sea? sort of sandy dunes there. Again, some sort of lakey, greeny, weedy thingies. Oh, we're turning already. Let's go. 38 degrees for 12 minutes and 28 seconds. They're taking the piss, aren't they? But let's do it. Cove. At the shoreline, adjust your path and head northeast up the coast. Past a multitude of pools, lakes, trees and creek beds. Watch for a cove that opens to Saltwater Lagoon. Which I 
think all lagoons, given that they exist behind the beaches, would be salt water, but who am I to know? Possibly not. Well, certainly a mix. There's always a river making the lagoon. Well, that'll be with fresh water, but then, you know, so connected to the sea, so we can be salt water. So I guess the lagoon might actually be, that might be the definition of a lagoon. Just uh, a lake is fresh water. The lagoon is salt slash fresh water. Have I figured it out from first principles? Could I just look it up? Yes. Will I? Possibly not. Maybe if I remember one day. Maybe I can ask Siri. What is a lagoon? Well, thank you, Siri. Why don't you just tell me the information? Why do I have to read it? Lagoon is a shallow body of water separated from a larger body of water by reefs, barrier islands, or barrier peninsula. Oh, well, I, I'm so much clearer about it then. Now I need to look up what a barrier peninsula is and a barrier island. Anyway, that was a mistake. That was a mistake. More knowledge always leads to more knowledge. Which, you know, hey, great, I love knowledge, but... I'm trying to fly my plane here right now. Don't need to go down a rabbit hole of Googling. Even though we've only done two minutes of 12 minutes 30. What are these like, flat... What do you call that? There's a name for that. It's not Butte. Butte are the ones in like Nevada desert that just they're just rocks that stick up out of the ground, I think. Whereas when you've got a flat mountain like that, I think there's a name for it. I can't think of what it is. And I'm not gonna ask Siri. Is that a runway over here? What you doing, sneaky little runway, huh? What you doing over there? Maybe maybe not. Not really showing up. Here as a runway? No, it's not a runway. It's just a. I don't know what it is. Doesn't look natural. What that is? No roads or anything. It must just be a weird. No, there's a square bit here. This is a runway. This is a runway that's not on the. It's not on the, on the system. Might be a secret military runway or something. Where the Russians have landed. Found them. Oh no, they're coming for me now. Sarah Palin. Watch out, Sarah Palin. You can see the Russians from your house. There is a road. Man, that, that road doesn't go anywhere. It just goes to that hill. What is this? It's a secret fucking runway. But everything is. It doesn't even. It hasn't even rendered in as a road or anything. This has been sort of shoddily cropped out so that no one would notice that there's a runway. It's a military base for sure. For sure. For sure. Look at the size of this plane! P-L-A-N-E, obviously. It's in the range in Spain. Again, the mountains over there. The mountains we were at are just miles away now. Ah, you blink and you're suddenly on the other side of the continent. How are we doing? We've done five minutes of 12 minutes, 20 hours. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're grinding. Pure gamer hours here. Yes, I get a little bit rambly on the long legs. What do you want me to do? Huh? What do you want me to do? 
I gotta amuse myself somehow. I gotta amuse you somehow. We've already used 14% of our fuel. Just refilled. Actually, I should still be on uh, right fuel? No, it went back to left fuel. Doesn't stick between uh, trips, obviously. But anyway, I switched it to right fuel before we landed, in case it, the fuel ran out while we were landing, which would have been a disaster, obviously. But obviously, overnight, the uh, the caretaker of that airport decided to get into my plane and redo the fuel back to the left tank and lower my flaps ready for takeoff. I appreciate you. Six and a half minutes done. Six minutes to go. admiring the scenery here. Incredible. Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. It's below us. More rivers. Just, I don't know what kind of vegetation all this is. Sort of like shrubby, mossy kind of stuff. Nice. Beautiful. 8 minutes 30. We've got 4 minutes to go. Let's try not to lose our sanity completely. Perhaps we are too late for that. So be it. Blotches of snow, not a single road or military installation to be found. And you'd think that the Bing Maps team, having scrubbed that airport from the game, even though it's not presumably a public airport, would then mention to the people making the bush trips, hey, why don't you not have it go past an obvious airport runway that is not on there? Yeah, I'd think, because there'd be a reason why it got scrubbed and attempted to be hidden. Surely. Because it's a military installation. I do did read something about that that, uh, you know, Obviously they show up because of the aerial photography, but um, they don't, they get taken away from the database of points of interest and things like that. 
Maybe they chose this bush trip specifically for that. Or that we would find it and ask questions. Well, let me ask you a question. Who gives a shit? 10 minutes 30, 2 minutes to go. We're heading to this cove up here. Saltwater Lagoon. Hold by Saltwater Lagoon. Incredibly creative naming systems. Water Pond. Over to the right here, there's more uh, sort of greeny looking lake things, or are they almost looks like um, fields, but maybe not. Doubt it. Doubt it. How much you could grow. Here's another little sneaky thing. What's that? Firing range. The army base here. That's not a natural formation, is it? Could be. Could be, actually. I mean, um, looks a bit straight, but that might just be some kind of algorithm thing. Definitely something. Rubbish tip or something, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. Questions that I'm not going to find the answers to. I'll just imagine that it's some kind of alien trough for the aliens to come and drink water from. I don't know. Something like that. That'll do. The slug like, the slug -like uh, uh, lizard aliens. Reptiles. They like those kind of trophy long trophy things. Maybe that's where one crashed. It was a crash, an alien crash landing. Figured it out. There it is. It's the aliens. Right. Um, this we've done 12 minutes 30, but um, we haven't quite made it to the cove yet. We'll wait for the purple line to take us to the next uh, area. Enjoy this little cove and lagoon. There we go, Tony. 57 degrees for 4 minutes 24. Barely a, a, a segment, really. 4 minutes. Easy. Lagoon. Continue heading northeast beyond this small lagoon and eventually you'll pass over Coast Lake on your approach to the greater waters of Nelson Lagoon. Excellent. Next lagoon, off in the distance there, as we can see. Oi, where's my sun gone? Oh, it's gonna rain on us. It's gonna rain. Alaskan rain. They call it snow. Let me figure out where the sun might be out there, I guess. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, you know, a bit of a, a bit of a break from the relentless sunshine. This is not relentless if it has just relented. Oh, there is a road there. Look at that. It's a road. That ain't no uh, road that goes all the way over there and then where. Maybe it is a river. Something. Yeah, it's an irrigation channel or something. And now that it's been built, it definitely doesn't look like a natural river, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere if it's a road. It goes around that lake there, and then where? Hmm? It's to here, and then maybe it's... I don't know. No, it looks like it just gets to there. Is that another airport? Secret military installation. Alright, two minutes done of four minutes twenty. 
have a quick glass of water to stay hydrated. Thank you, co-pilot, for getting that out of the back of the plane. to Lagoon, Nelson Lagoon. Ooh, a mix of names, isn't it? There's been some Russian sounding names, some very English colonial kind of names, and even some native kind of names. Which is presumably not at all surprising, given that America owns this place, presumably whoever took it first out of Russia and America from the natives, and the Russia did own Alaska for a while there. So, yeah. So, if you're going to go around and change the names from Russian to English, why wouldn't you do all of them? Why would you leave some of them? Hmm. Again, questions I have. Right, another 30 seconds or 40 seconds or so. We won't know when the next turning is because the next turning is exactly the same heading. So we're going to arrive at the lagoon and then keep going straight. Apparently there's an airport at the edge of this lagoon in front of us, not, you know, directly in front of us. Doesn't look like it yet, but I don't think everything's as loaded in yet, so... We'll see when we get there. I think, frankly, once we hit this water, we'll restart, reset our clock because the next leg is 4 minutes 40. And we'll adjust from there. But it's the same heading, so purple line's just going to be pointing in the same direction. We won't know that it's moved on. Unless it shows me actually here. Point of interest. Yeah, okay, it just changed then. It just changed the waypoint just then. Perfect timing. Okay. Uh, reset our clock. So, Nelson Lagoon Airport. 57 degrees for 4 minutes 40. Follow along the coastal outcropping in the distance, and it will deliver you to Nelson Lagoon Airport, the next stop on your Alaskan bush trip adventure. So, what you're telling me, laughably, is that somewhere over here there is an airport. It hasn't grown up yet. But in 4 minutes 40 seconds, so we Try and figure out if we can see it on our topographical thing here. Not really. Oh, there it is. The, there. Oh, really? It's just here somewhere? It does seem to match up. The airport is literally basically one ends in the water. So, it must be it there. Oh, can I see it on here? Is that it there? Black line? Possibly. Definitely looks like the right direction. Okay. Okay, I'm still not quite seeing it. Yeah, that must be it there. Alright, well we can start losing some speed. So that we can get our flappy wappies down. What? What a weird place to put an airport. And where's the road to it? Why is there an airport there? Is there a runway there? Come on, explain what you mean.
I mean, at least it's not going to, you know, affect anyone's houses or something. There's, there's nothing here. There's literally nothing here. Why is there an airport here? Is it literally just a stop off for, for tourist planes like this? Like I'm doing. For bush trips and stuff. Yeah, it's set up by some uh, aviation society. Actually, be the craziest runway I've ever heard of. What's it doing there? There's no road on this. There isn't. There's there just isn't a road, so it's not servicing anything. I mean, unless there's like boats or something there. Maybe there's a I don't know, again, a water treatment plant or something. Something going on here that doesn't look natural as well. Weird. What is going on there? Maybe that is a road. A very thin road that's uh, on the sort of top of that hill there. You can really call it a hill. Oh, look, there's even a light on the runway. Is this a little town, even? What are you people doing living there? be fishermen. There must just be good, you know, fishing here in this lagoon. It's a town. It's a village. Been quick enough. Wow. Oh, well that answers why there's an airport there. It's a town. Nutty. What a place to live. What an absolute place to live. I mean, presumably it's some kind of industry that, you know, f and in, uh, literally fly in, fly out. It's truly incredible. Seriously, why aren't I... Oh, I'll just go to zero. Just not losing height in the slightest. At least not in a reasonable rate. I think we're gonna have to come out this way a bit. Better around a bit. Let's get our bearings internally. Wow, what an incredible spot. Really impressed. I think we're coming in too high. You know what? No, I think we're okay. I think we're okay. It's a reasonably long runway. This plane stops reasonably quickly. Thank you for letting me know that. Just got it right. Only just though. Perfect, really. And miracle. Hope it registers. One hour on the dot, leg five, I think it was. Four or five, one of those. Alaskan bush trip. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you can join me for the next one. Au revoir. Goodbye.